Good morning. Okay, so this is a quick video of, uh, this is a Nissan Leaf 2013-14-15 inverter. I'm not sure, I think it's for all those years. And I got that working. We A little while ago we had made a, a Chevy, like a control board for the Chevy Volt inverter. And it basically, can, it can control two separate motors. But we just kind of used half of that to to control just to do some testing with the Nissan Leaf inverter to see if I could figure out the pinout of the driver board and everything. So basically we took the control board out of the Nissan Leaf inverter. It's right here. And the size of that connector. And we just hooked up the a different control board over to the driver section just to see if we can get everything switching correctly and figure out the current sensors and all those details. Now the current sensors were it turned out to be they were kind of interesting. Here's a let's see. So here's like a sample. This is a 2011 2012 Nissan Leaf current sensor. And um this one was pretty standard. They had, for the 2011, they had a 5 volt ground and a signal. Okay, that was no problem. And then for this one, um, for this version, they had 5 volt ground and two separate signals, maybe for, uh, but the signals were the same, so it was probably for redundancy. And also on the 2013, 14, 15, they only have two current sensors, which is all you really need, but still, they don't have one on the third phase just for safety or anything. Maybe they're trying to cut a little bit of costs. So let's do a quick demonstration. We're gonna we're going to be running through the inverter one, two, three, four, five, about sixty some volts. And be we're going to be running the uh, uh, Nissan Leaf motor, you know, which is appropriate since it's a Nissan Leaf inverter. So we're gonna turn on twelve volt power to the this Chevy Volt board over here. Let's see here. Okay. And then we already have the the high voltage of 60 volts or whatever. So let's let's give it a little throttle. See if anything terrible happens. And no problem. The nice thing about these is they come water cooled and you basically, so what we're doing is we're making a, a new board to replace the 2011-2012 board. Look how little that thing is. And what I did is just used a little pencil blowtorch thing and then just kind of blasted off the little connectors because of course I don't know if you can just buy those on Mouser or whatever. And so just take those off and then you can... I'll have a new board and then I can just stick the connectors on the new board and then it'll just be nice and easy. Just take off the old board, stick a new board on, and you have a full inverter ready to go. So, and then that's it. Okay. I don't know. I guess the. I wonder if I could show the. Here's a 2011 2012 control board, and here's the 2013 14 15 board. They're quite different. This one mounts vertically, and this one mounted horizontally. And very different connectors to the outside world. Look at that. Not even close. <sighs> Another, 
another interesting difference was um, for the 2011 and 12 inverter, the current sensors were swapped around so that when you have positive current flowing through, the voltage goes down. And in the 2013, 14, 15, when the positive current goes through, the voltage goes up. So the software, you need to worry about details of having a minus sign in there if you're using the 2011 and 12. I found that out the hard way. Fortunately, we had a hardware overcurrent protection, so that nothing blew up. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's about it. Bye-bye.